about two years ago, uh, we broke ground and started growing um, mostly intense vegetable production. We do a lot of salad greens. My name is Peter McDermott and we are at Urban Growth Farms, uh, which is an entrepreneurial urban farm on the near west side of Cleveland. Uh, we've got about a third of an acre here over three vacant lots. Uh, most of these houses on this block burned down in the 1970s. Well, this, um, this land is, is kind of special to me personally. Um, it's owned by Urban Community School, which is right across the street here. And uh, I grew up in this neighborhood and I actually went to school at Urban Community from kindergarten through eighth grade. So when they built this new campus here, um, they acquired all this land and, and I had been walking around the neighborhood and kind of saw this, this large patch of green space. And so I met with the director of the school who I knew from, you know, 15, 20 years back and, uh, you know, told her that I was interested in starting an urban farm here. And, They've really been nothing, you know, but supportive of us. Um, so it's it's kind of an interesting connection that I have. You know, I've, I've, I grew up probably maybe 20 blocks from here. Um, right now I live about five or six blocks from here. Uh, and, you know, every day I get to see the, the students from the school across the street and, and get to work with them every now and then and, and sort of get to, get to have a sort of a deeper personal connection with the neighborhood and, and with the land where we're farming. Um, and so, you know, for us it's definitely, you know, first and foremost, we're trying to make it into a successful business that can create a living and a life for us, um, but at the same time it's, you know, <laughs> it's very much trying to, to, to keep that connection to the people in the land where I grew up and, and you know, the place that I call home. So there are, there are two of us here, myself and, and my girlfriend, who do the majority of the day-to-day -day work here. Um, I'd say I'm probably out here maybe 20 to 30 hours a week or so. Um, so it's, you know, it's my part-time job. So in terms of our, our production practices here, I would say it's sort of a, it's a synthesis of a couple different um, thought patterns. One of which is, is called spin farming, uh, which stands for small plot intensive farming. And that's basically a framework for commercial farming on less than an acre of land. Um, and it's, it's sort of a guide, it's both a guidebook and a, um, a sort of a community of, of practitioners around the country who are all doing commercial small scale farming. And uh, it, you know, it includes everything from um, you know, production practice, practices to uh, what you're growing to how you're marketing. So basically the, print, the spin principles are that if you want to make a lot of money on a small amount of land, you need to be growing high value crops. And they need to be getting as many cents on the dollar as possible. So in terms of what we're choosing to grow as far as uh, the salad greens, the root vegetables, the alliums, the, you know, the, the relatively high value on a square foot basis, um, and also the way that the farm is laid out uh, is somewhat influenced by spin principles. So each of these beds that you can sort of see behind me um, are a standard size. So they're all about 25 feet long by about 2 feet wide. And so there's nothing magic about that number, but it's, it's 50 square feet, which gives you sort of a, an easy number to do revenue projections on a, on a, on a bed basis. Um, so one of the spin principles is that for every planting of every bed, for high value crops you're trying to generate at least $100 per harvest. So if you look around the farm here, we have a little over 50 beds um, that are all about the same size. So if we, were, if we were trying to plant all high value crops here, say all baby spinach, um, you know, for, for each of those harvests of that bed of spinach, we'd be generating about $100. If you consider the fact that over the course of the growing season, you know, we can plant three, four, maybe five relays of that spinach crop, that's when you start to get into the 30, you know, 45, 50 thousand um, dollars per half acre area. Now certainly you have to balance that intensive production with uh, managing soil fertility and, and all that sort of stuff. And 
so I would sort of say what we're doing here is a is a balance of uh, a balance of spin, uh, very much also influenced by Elliot Coleman and and his production techniques, um, and also as we learn more about it, trying to incorporate more um, permaculture principles in, in terms of trying to have um, perennial beds and and other beneficial plants and fruit trees um, to to get as much diversity in, into our production system as possible. So this is um, this is my alter ego as a farmer, uh, but during uh, I, I don't know if I call it my day job because it's split pretty evenly. Um, but the the other work that I do is with Entrepreneurs for Sustainability or E4S, uh, mostly working on uh, sort of building the the local food network. I've tried to do that in a, in a couple different ways, um, but it's but it's mostly through sort of the the idea of building social networks and how can you, um, you know, looking at the questions of how can you spread ideas quickly. How can you move people to action? Uh, how can you increase sort of collaboration and awareness of what's going on in Northeast Ohio, um, so that everybody can do what they what they're trying to do better? Uh, and so there are a couple of different ways that that I've I've tried to work towards that idea. Um, and it's most of it is focused around the local food Cleveland network, uh, and that's essentially a, a network of folks in in Cleveland and and Northeast Ohio. Who are really working to sort of grow up a thriving local food economy and culture in the region. There are really there are two programs that I've been working on um, to, to sort of create this local food Cleveland network. Uh, one of which is uh, a monthly networking event, which is on the first Monday of each month, uh, and essentially there is there's a different topic each month, and um, we invite folks from around the region who are doing. Uh, you know, innovative businesses or projects to come and really sort of shine a light on their work. So, for instance, in uh, this last February, we held an event, event called So You Want to Be a Farmer. And we had, uh, you know, folks who are, have been farming in the region for a while, others who are just getting started, small scale, large scale, uh, as well as a couple uh, organizational leaders who are trying to increase the number of farmers in the region. And so we just had a panel discussion on, you know, what are the signs that farming might be right for you? You know, are you find, finding more and more uh, flannel shirts in your drawers, or are you, <laughs> you wake up at 6:30 in the morning with, uh, you know, the urge to, to thin some beets or something like that? Uh, and we had over 200, I think 230 people attend that event. Um, so there's obviously this this huge groundswell in uh, energy and excitement around local food, and so really. One of the goals of, of building this local food through the network is how do we inspire more people to action? How do we create opportunities for people to find their place in the local food economy and provide them with the connections and the learning so that they can really figure out what it is that they want to do and then get started on that work. I see, I, I'm beginning also to see, I think, a shift in the way that we think of leadership. Uh, you know, I think what, what we're used to hearing is sort of we need we need more leaders, right? We need more leaders out there who are going to tell us what to do. You know, we need the mayor to be a leader, we need the city council people to be a leader. And I think that sort of waiting for somebody else dynamic is beginning to shift into more, I think, of an inner, inner sort of personal leadership. So how can we really unlock the entrepreneurial leadership, uh, you know, that, that has been hidden, I think, um, for you know, for, for a while in the city. And so I think it's sort of a, it's a matter of how, how can we find sort of that leadership within ourselves to move things forward in an entrepreneurial way. This idea of, of having a decentralized network where people can connect and learn about what's going on in the region, uh, I think is gonna be key to the success of the local food system. Um, because I do think, you know, if, if, we're, if we're trying to to grow a you know, local economies that are resilient uh, and that are going to be sustainable and be around you know 100 years from now 500 years from now I really think we need to be looking at sort of the principles of resilience so you know are the economies that we're recreating you know are they decentralized uh, are they diverse do we have people you know starting projects and businesses 
um, you know, small and large, using all different sorts of approaches. Uh, you know, do we have redundancy in the system? I think one of the great shortcomings of, of the, the industrial food system right now uh, is that pretty much all of our eggs are in one basket. You know, all of these farms are producing the same crops in the same way, and if something comes along that makes that production, you know, system uh, difficult, then, you know, we're in trouble. So I think the, you know, this, this idea of, of networks and resiliency is going to be important um, as we move forward and, and create a local food economy that's, you know, built to last. And I think in a city like Cleveland, uh, you know, that does have this industrial legacy, you know, we are, we are blessed with the space that we're left with. You know, we're blessed with the vacant storefronts that are, you know, in our, in our neighborhood centers. Um, that, you know, there's a lot of raw materials to, to experiment with here. And I think farming is kind of one example of that. Um, and I think it's really not a surprise that in a city like Cleveland, you see this urban farming movement taking off as, as rapidly and enthusiastically.